words of appreciation and welcoming can make any day better and any people special a very happy good morning to one and all present here on behalf of kesar college of arts and science for women i am delighted to welcome you all for an entrepreneur talk on unleashing your entrepreneurial potential welcome every morning with a smile let your first heart set the theme of success and positive action I feel extremely gratified to invite Yashika Devi Chellappan to welcome the gathering. Rise up, start fresh, see the bright opportunity in each every new day. A very good morning to one and all present here. I'm Yashika Devi, pursuing third B English. I welcome you all warmheartedly to the entrepreneur talk on unleashing your entrepreneurial potential, organized by Department of English. With the blessings of our founder, late line Dr. K. S. Rangasamy, M. J. F. I would like to welcome our respected chairman, Mr. R. S. Rajivasan, in absentia of K. S. R. Educational Institution, for being a backbone and pillar of everything. It's my pleasure to welcome our elegant executive director, Mrs. Kavita Rajivasan, in absentia. It's my honor to welcome our beloved chief executive officer, Mrs. Akila Muthuramalingam, in absentia. Great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. It's never about the role, always about the goal. Now, I cordially welcome our humble and energetic principal, Dr. M. Karthikeyan in absentia, who is the pillar of KSR College of Arts and Science for women. Sunshine is a welcome thing. It brings a lot of brightness. I feel elated to welcome our honorable chief guest, Ms. Preeti, proprietor of Bridge Collections, Coimbatore, on behalf of the entire gathering. Welcome you, ma'am. smile is a universal welcome i feel delighted to welcome our guiding star our department head mrs r satyapriya in absentia teachers encourage minds to think hands to create and hearts to love i feel grateful to welcome all the faculty members for this webinar success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out i feel glad to welcome all the energetic young minds once again i welcome you all To be inspired is great, but to be an inspiration is an honor. I am happy to invite Ragini Veerapathiran to spell out the chief guest profile. Start your day with a smile. A pleasant morning to one and all present here. Every thought you produce, anything you say, any action you do, it bears your signature. I am Ragini, pursuing third B English. It gives me an immense pleasure to introduce our honorable guest, Ms. Preeti, MA MPhil, PhD research scholar, proprietor of Pritz Collections, Coimbatore. She served as a lecturer at Avinash Lingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education for Women. She is recognized as a debate speaker on the Domestic Polymer Channel, Coimbatore. She is the founder and proprietor of Pritz Collections, a clothing retail business, and at providing quality clothing to customers at affordable prices. She is utilizing innovative strategies for marketing and sales. She is focused on making a positive impact on society by providing part-time work opportunities to students. She conducts management classes for aspiring female entrepreneurs and offers counseling services to individuals who experience loss and hardship. She is actively involved in community initiatives aimed at addressing social issues and promoting well-being. Talking of our achievements would probably consume more time. We are dignified to have such a great personality like you with us, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you for the introduction, Rajini. Now the session is yours, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. So first of all, I thank the organization for giving me a uh, opportunity to meet the students. who are going to become young entrepreneurs so i thank the organization and the uh, organizers who have granted the successful meet and i thank the head of the department faculty members of the department and my dear young students uh, please uh, excuse me if i uh, consume your time so i think uh, i will make your time more joyful and uh, i think i'll uh, 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 make the topic uh, essential for your growth and i think uh, uh, there are uh, so many uh, ba english literature students maybe they may be from first years also so i thought i can use both uh, uh, tamil and english hope uh, it will be fine uh, 
Can I get the answer for that? Will it be fine if I talk in English or should I have to use bilingual, bilingual language? English is okay, ma'am. Uh, since there are so many young, young students there, I don't think uh, they will get, because since it is a business talk, it is not the literature talk. So I thought I can use both uh, English and Tamil. So, okay, let me proceed with the slides first. Are these slides visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma okay. Okay, then. Uh, so today, uh, I have been given the topic of unleashing entrepreneurial potential. So whenever we are thinking of unleashing entrepreneurial potential, I thought uh, everyone are entrepreneurs here. We do not know that we have that potential inside ourselves. So what we are thinking is we are not capable of anything. So uh, before moving on to uh, the barriers and all, I just want to uh, make uh, uh, some note of uh, uh, the honorable or uh, they are uh, the supreme business entrepreneurs in the world. So maybe hopefully you can know Indu Jain. So Indu Jain is the Indian media executive and philanthropist. Uh, uh, she is the one of the chief executive of the Times New Roman Group. Hopefully you know that uh, there is a Times group under that we will have so many newspaper like the Times New Roman, uh, sorry, the Times of India, uh, uh, then uh, uh, Economics Times. And she has also many, uh, uh, for example, we all know that uh, a film fair awards, right? right? So those Primfair Awards are from Indu Jain only. So uh, her, her career was started uh, when she was uh, um, when she was sub, uh, almost 40 years. So she is the leading media, uh, she is one of the leading media group and her media was founded uh, when she was uh, 1838 in Mumbai. It provides so many publishing services such as magazines, internet, and uh, newspapers like Economic Times, Times of India. Then uh, maybe uh, some North Indians might have known about this feminine Sandhya Times and all. Um, such such as Times New Roman. Uh, that is the FM radio network. Also, we all know that radio ra radio Mirchi, right? One who has hosted by Sendil in Tamil Nadu. So radio machi, sama hot machi, we all know that, right? So that is the one she has been organized uh, of. And uh, the Times Group acts as its supreme fame generating source. It is the most circulated English daily newspaper. And uh, it was acquired from a, a British group and today she sells more than 3 million copies over the worldwide. So don't you uh, believe that, uh, so everyone are new, reading the newspapers in recent days, and from no penny, she has gained almost some $2 billion network in the current world. So now she has under uh, some 7,000 employees. And uh, uh, so daily she has been uh, earning some, uh, 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 some uh, one crores and all. Now she's no more. But uh, what, what I'm uh, uh, trying to say is, even though she is no more, she has started uh, she has initiated something and she has developed something and now with the name itself stands as an embodiment. So that is what I want you young women, uh, uh, what uh, entrepreneurs to learn from uh, those uh, eminent persons. So uh, she has also faced so many failures like uh, while she was starting her career, she faced so many criticism for being a woman. And that was a difficult route for her to achieve in the male-centric society. So she, uh, what, uh, she cut off all the barriers and what she thought was her only aim was to reach the heights, which is only made for those men. So she started to uh, 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 
eradicate those uh, uh, prescribed patriarchal norms and she was started to thinking that uh, she she has to begin the uh, eradication of uh, uh, this uh, uh, patriarchal norms so she she started doing that and now she is uh, she has been one of the most uh, uh, eminent person around the world and like her there is one more person that is uh, indra nui uh, uh, indra nui is uh, when we are from tamil nadu we have to know who is indra nui she is from chennai and from her childhood she has been uh, uh, inspired to uh, uh, meet uh, american people so she thought that she has to go to america once so us once so while she was at her childhood she used to dream that uh, uh, she has to be a, she has to be an american citizen so what she was started like uh, she started to study uh, uh, mba courses and then uh, with some uh, funds from other ngo organizations she uh, had a chance of uh, getting education from one of the uh, us universities and there she went and uh, uh, she started to groom her uh, uh, entrepreneurial skills so uh, she started to groom that uh, she has the capability of uh, managing a group of uh, organizations and from there she get an opportunity to work at pepsi pepsi and group you all know that pepsi pepsi coca cola brand right so yeah uh, in that brand she has started to work as just an employee so within some years she became chairperson of that employee and she was the the fifth ceo of pepsi and co farmers so now she is uh, she has ranked almost uh, uh, some 67th place in the most popular women among 100 uh, numbers so uh, so uh, uh, and she has a thought that uh, say everyone when we think of the beverages we all know that uh, pepsi is not that much healthy right so what she thought was instead of uh, that uh, uh, she thought that she has to uh, develop some other uh, some healthy products in order to make the society get useful of it so what she thought was she started to initiate uh, some uh, uh, topic of uh, i mean uh, some uh, drinks which is uh, made from fresh juices like uh, uh, orange juices uh, apple juices and all so so later she has started uh, to develop all those things and uh, with the guidance of some of the chemical engineers and uh, uh she has started uh, the squacker votes everyone knows that uh, those who are so uh, uh keen about their health might have known the squacker votes right yeah so those squacker votes has been one of the part of pepsi and co and almost uh, they, uh, someone might have know about uh, uh tropicana tropicana uh, which has so many flavors like orange apple and so many flavors yeah that's too is from pepsi and co so uh, like that she has made uh, she has started many beverage brands and uh, 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 which is mostly useful for the society uh, uh, i mean uh, maybe uh, good consuming uh, food items okay so uh, then she becomes the co chair of the world justice project since she was so dedicated towards her work she has been appointed as the co chair person for the world justice project and uh, after that she has per performed so many environmental uh, task like uh, she has been one of the part of environmental sustainability and uh, she has reached uh, uh, to many places and her talent uh, and her sustainability is about uh, building a company where employees do not just make a living uh, but they can have a life and bring their whole selves to work and she has on her record she has many awards um she has been uh, uh, she was named number 1 in fortune magazines and uh, uh, she was also the ceo of uh, global supply chain leaders group you might have known that uh, this was the global supply chain lead uh, group have so many 
uh, categorizations in it. And this Pepsi and Co will come under that only. So likewise, like these women entrepreneurs, we don't know that we all have the capability of finding what we really want. Those persons uh, 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 really know that what they really want. So even Indra Noe, uh, when she started this KFC, when she started of thinking uh, uh, she, she might have to develop some uh, area on this uh, chicken foods and all, uh, she, uh, she had a conversation with this KFC uh, a CEO, and while they had some conversation, she thought that the KFC is one of the biggest uh, uh, achievement they will be awaiting. So with that mind, she has started KFC, Pizza Hut and all. Now, do you believe that how far this KFC and Pizza Hut is in market? So uh, she doesn't know that whether she will achieve or not, but what she thought was she has the ability to make it uh, growth in a proper way. So that's what her sustainability make her to progress. Even uh, Indu Jain made that one too. So uh, with all these persons, we have to understand that women also can reach uh, uh, so much of miles. They, they can also cross miles and achieve their own capabilities and achieve their own uh, what uh, mm, some uh, that leadership. Uh, so when we come to women, I think uh, you are all uh, girls of young minds. You might have uh, uh, you might have endured some challenges while you were uh, facing to start a career or a business or uh, maybe anything regarding sports or uh, even cultures. It can, it can be anything. Everyone, uh, since we are born of born as a uh, girl children. Uh, we might have the difficulty to overcome all these barriers, right? So while we come to this business path, we all have been uh, some difficulties in challenging uh, the stereotypes which has been prescribed by the patriarchal setup. So now uh, let us uh, um, think what are all the challenges a woman entrepreneur will face. The first one will be limited access to resources and networks. So whenever we are thinking of resources and networks, we will not be given a penny from our parents. Our parents will never give us a penny to even uh, go, uh, go and buy something. So that is the case of the girl children. So when we go and uh, tell them that I want to be an entrepreneur and I want to uh, start a business like that, so they won't allow us to progress. It is not that kind since uh, parents have the mindset that girls are only born to get married and do all the household courts like that. So uh, these chores has been prescribed only from those uh, uh, patriarchal uh, uh, setup. So the parents are obliged to follow the norms. So this is the case of the parents, and that's why whenever we got, we are going and telling them that uh, we have to uh, we have to start a business and all, they will uh, they they will simply say no. That is the case uh, for us. So the first main thing will be limited access to resources and networks, and the second one will be stigmatization and negative perception. Like uh, they used to stigmatize us. You are a girl. What is the benefit of of you to start a business. Anyhow, you are going to get married and going to bear children. So what is the benefit of going to start a business? So they used to stigmatize you as only the household worker. And the other one will be negative perception. They don't, they don't believe you. Instead, they, um, instead they say like, uh, uh, when you do that, it will, it will be in loss. You cannot achieve in that, like that they say. So, uh, so we have to, uh, uh, in order to uh, achieve in that, we have to cross that barrier. So uh, then the third barrier will be lack of financial resources. As I said, uh, the first one will be limited access to resources. They won't allow us. And the third one will be lack of financial resources. So uh, even we cannot get help from the bank, bank managers, or we, even we cannot uh, get some loans when we go, 
see if there is a man and man going to a bank and asking for a loan they will provide the provide the man loan so in uh, when it comes to a woman if i am planning to start a business and i'm going to a bank for asking loan and all the first thing they will ask is whether are you married or not where is your husband or where is your father is there any back support for you so that was that will be the questions uh so these are all the cases for each and every individual who are born as a girl child so then the fourth one will be inadequate training and access to information so we cannot start a business as it is like uh we start uh, uh we start uh, cooking and all so whenever we start a business we have the knowledge of the business so when we when it comes to knowledge of business everyone will lack that knowledge and everyone will uh, everyone uh, we don't know the information about the business we are going to proceed with so that will be the case and the fifth one will be promote women friendly networks so okay fine i am going to start a business and i have much information and knowledge about the business so i now i am planning to start a business but when i when i go and start a business uh, in a male centric society everyone will start to discourage me so that is the condition uh, now in india so everyone will start to discourage me so there won't be women friendly networks uh, so in order to uh, we cannot change that uh, manner but we have to promote those women friendly networks so and after that even we promote women friendly networks some person will have the mindset that uh, uh, see if we uh, uh, being a single woman and starting a business you won't get a safety and you will be get harassed or abused by some random persons when you are at a shop that will be the case so there there will be always this gender based violence so everyone will say that so why are you uh, wasting your time and doing all these stuff so instead of that go and get married that will be the condition and the another uh, challenge will be the lack of societal support yeah as i said uh, there will be uh, gender based violence we don't get the societal support and everyone will uh, uh, will uh, degrade our abilities and everyone will not support our intentions of uh, making the world better and uh, 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 you see when we are lacking the societal support it won't be a problem what if we lack obligations from our own family even we have so much of funds even we have uh, so much of knowledge about the business we cannot start the business as it is we have to get some assistance or some support uh, maybe emotional support not i am i'm not telling about this financial support and all Uh, maybe some moral support we need some moral support whenever we are starting a business or else uh, we don't uh, get the confident to build that uh, uh, what uh, uh, that uh, organization so so this this role will be the challenges we we will face the family obligations and the work family interface for example there are some married women and if they are planning to start a business this work family interface will be there because they have to manage both work and the family uh, uh see they have to uh, start with cooking uh, feeding children then uh, uh, making their husbands to get ready for the office of work and uh, simultaneously they have to think of what to do next in their business to promote or uh, to develop their business so this work family interference will be some difficult challenges for the married women so while these are all the challenges for women uh there are also some inbuilt quality on us which says we are also an entrepreneur so let's uh, look into it some basic characters of women in the uh, in themselves in the present sociological and cultural setup uh it's a source of power so everyone will have the uh, 
not like I'm getting some disturbances. Yeah, thank you. So Indian women are women are considered a sakti, which means a source of power. So everyone says that women have the power within themselves. We are the Shakti, we are the creators, we are the nurturers, and we are the sustainers of the humankind. So inside our, uh, with, uh, with, within each and every single girl, ch girl child, we have the capability of, of nurturing and uh, developing uh, entrepreneurial setup. And the next one will be effectively coordinating the available factors and resources. So think of our mothers. So what they will do, they will be the source power, so source of power in our family. And the next one will be they will co coordinate the available factors and resources. See, for example, in my uh, home, there is only some hundred rupees. What will my mom do with that hundred rupees? She will manage all the resources. I mean, she will manage all the difficulties. Like uh, she has to buy food for uh, children. She has to buy some dresses for children. She has to uh, buy uh, some uh, what uh, uh, some medicines for children. So with that available resources, she she will coordinate and uh, she can main, manage it effectively. So that is the inbuilt quality of each woman. So we all we are also having that quality, right? And that quality can easily compare to an entrepreneurial woman who have, uh, uh, for example, if I have some one lakh rupees and I am planning to purchase uh, uh, kurtis, uh, lehengas, uh, leggings and all, I have to manage with that one lakh rupee and I have to buy all these things, which is a need. So while at that time, what I'll think, okay, so I, I'll uh, divide the percentage and I'll uh, 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 separate the money. Uh, for example, I'll separate some 10,000 for lehengas and some uh, 20,000 for this kurtis and some 30,000 for some saris. So I have the inbuilt quality, which has been there while I, uh, since I born as a woman. So uh, this will, these are all the ba basic characters of each woman. And uh, then there will be efficient execution of decisions imposed on, it, on them. And see, for example, if, the, if our mother uh, is uh, having some difficulties in uh, managing all these uh, children's education, husband's uh, work, uh, and their own work, or some uh, father-in-law or mother-in-law's uh, health condition, what they will do? they will start to take a decision that what they have to do and they will start to execute it without considering or without giving a second thought. So even in business, whenever we are, uh, uh, whenever we are thinking of something, if we are going on to think of the, uh, like whether it is right or not, it will take only the time. But we don't have much time to progress or to success. So what we do, instead of uh, taking time, what we have to do is, we have to start executing the decision which has been made by us. Because we know what is right and what is wrong. We very well know that, right? So with that concept, we have to start executing the decision which has been uh, started by us then there will be clear vision and ambition on the improvement of family and children. Uh, as I said earlier, the mothers will have the clear vision and ambition to improve their child's welfare and their family's well-being. <clears throat> uh, so when it comes to business also, we will have a clear vision and ambition to improve our uh, organization, to improve our sales, and to improve our marketing strategies. 
and the next one will be patience and bearing the suffering on behalf of others so every mothers all all our mothers are so patient in nature that we know why because they know that uh, being patient is not uh, a way for uh, uh, getting uh, sadness being patient and managing all the task and bearing all the problems will make them their children and their family in a better way so uh, this is the inbuilt quality of a woman so likewise when it comes to business so for example if i am facing a loss i have to bear the suffering and for example if my friend uh, who has been uh, who who was a partner of me has uh, ditched me what happens so i lost uh, almost uh, all my assets right but even in that time i have to bear the suffering because uh, see while we bear the sufferings then we can step back to our normal life normal life if not we we are going to think on the laws and we are going to uh, if we go on uh, think on, uh, think on how uh, our friend has betrayed us we cannot progress towards success instead we will fail in what we thought to be done so being patient will make us Uh, will make us to step towards success and the last one will be ability to work physically more at any age see there are so many mother in laws and there are so many grand uh, grandmothers in each and every family so when we thinking of their age as 80 or 90 do you think that uh, uh, if we if we are 80 and 90 will be able to do all those tasks which has been done by our mother and grandmothers no never right yeah so uh, so uh, the age doesn't matter for them because what they need what they want is see still they are alive they have to do in their mindset they have to do all the work and they have to do all the work for themselves and for their family so uh, even this, even in when it comes to business for example earlier we have mentioned two eminent persons right jane so those persons they uh, still they they reach their older age like 73 and 80 they were working physically which means they were working hard to develop their firm so that has to be uh that has to be in the mind of each entrepreneur because see for example if for some days i am working and for uh, the remaining days i'm sleeping or uh, I, i get bored of those works and i'm not doing those tasks what will happen your business will not be in the progress instead it will uh what it will uh, down towards so that will the, that will be the position so instead of that like our mothers and grandmothers who work day and night till their uh, death we have if we start a firm or if we start a business we have to work for the success or we have to work till our life ends because uh, say for example uh, uh, this uh, sundar pichai ceo uh, now uh, i think nowadays uh, we are getting uh, rumors like he has been uh, uh, thrown out from the google firm so see even if he if uh, if he thrown out from the firm did he stop working no right because uh, he has the ability to do whatever he wishes so what will what will be he do he will start another firm or he will start work for another firm and he will progress his growth right so that has to be done from done by each and every individual so now what is the secret to success so uh, so for all these times i have been talking about we have to get success 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 and all. 
So what is the secret to get success in our life as an entrepreneur? Uh, the one quality is leadership. So leadership, for example, if we are uh, some 30 members in a class, there will be only one leader for a class. So why she call, why she is called as leader? What is the meaning of this leader? So, so leaders have the capability of managing everyone around them. And all, all of them to listen to what they speak. So one of the main quality to become success in the business field is to take the quality of leadership. So running a business, it is all about the leadership. Then one should learn from successful entrepreneurs and business owners who have succeeded in their life from a small scale business and lead their organizations effectively. They, uh, even we can uh, take examples from so many eminent persons and their lifestyles and how they get uh, success in their lives. So we have to think that we also have the capability of making others listen to what we are speaking. So if someone listens to you, then you'll be the leader. Yes, so the leaders will never Leaders will never fall for others' criticism. They will always look high and think high and grow high. So the leadership will, quality will make you in a progressive manner and you will attain success eventually. And uh, there are some nine C's for women entrepreneurs to get success. The first one will be control. So control, what do you mean by control? So in general, what do you mean by control? Controlling, controlling, right? So in business also, it is the ability to make uh, corporate decisions. So what do you mean by corporate decisions here? Corporate decision means what are all these in the organizations or what are all the difficult difficulties you face in your business? you have to take the corporate decisions and you have to get the control of what you have to do next. It means uh, uh, guiding uh, the activities, employees, uh, and uh, how the progress, uh, uh, how the organization has to progress. So the first thing everyone have, have to get success is to get the control of the organization. And the second one has to be get the confidence. So what do you mean by confidence here? In general, confidence means uh, some, uh, uh, um, maybe uh, you think that if I do something, it will, uh, it will somehow um, satisfy what I want. So that is the confidence inside us. For example, if I, I am having the confidence that I'll get a good marks at my uh, examinations, that confidence will make you to prepare for your exams. So with that preparation, you will succeed in that. So with, without that confidence, you cannot succeed in the career. So likewise, in the business field, confidence helps one to uh, deal better with whatever the conflict arises. And it will improve your communication skills. See, for example, now I am having the confidence that I'll uh, make you all listen to what I'm speaking. So it will make each individual to improve their communication skills. And the next one will be, uh, see, when, whenever you are confident, you can make uh, a happier uh, work mindset. And... Uh, you will uh, uh, welcome what are all the feedback comes. For example, if I, even uh, after this session, if someone is telling that, no, this is not, this is not right, then I have the mentality to take the feedback also because I have the confidence that I can change whatever mistakes I make. So the confidence will help, uh, will enable one to take feedback better and it can also make one 
to become a better leader and a better managing director. So the next one will be courage. So courage, uh, when we are thinking of courage, someone, some girls uh, while taking, uh, uh, while crossing the roads, doesn't, uh, will don't have the courage to cross the roads. Why? Because we are thinking that if we cross the road, some person will hit us, right? So we, we, we lack the courage to do whatever we do. But uh, according to me, courage is one of the essential quality that often separates the ordinary from the extraordinary. So if there are some 12 members in a group, so uh, everyone will, uh, 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 if, uh, uh, if ma'am is scolding us, if ma'am is scolding the 12 persons, there will be some always some one uh, uh, a leader or a, a, a true person who guides everyone, right? So what he or she does, she used to go and meet the uh, supervisor or meet the staff member, and she will apologize for the mistakes. So even for that apologization, she has to have the courage in it, right? So, so uh, according to when it comes to the business sector, the courage will be the driving force that propels individuals to embrace risk. And uh, if there are some challenging norms and uh, if there are some changes that drives uh, from uh, failures, we have to get the courage to, in order to embrace those risks and challenges. And the next one will be creativity. So whenever we are starting a business, say now, nowadays everyone are starting a business. There are so many business around that. Even uh, for example, now I am running a cloth uh, business, right? So even in a cloth sector, there are so much of, uh, uh, see for each and every corner, there is a cloth shop. But what makes mine different from all those cloth shops has to be important so for that i have to think creatively right so i have to take some innovative and unique approaches to make the firm success so creativity will help create will creativity will be the essential tool for each uh, entrepreneur and the next one will be conviction so conviction means in general, conviction means strong opinion or belief, right? So when, when we are having strong opinion and belief, it will allow us to overcome the obstacles if something arises. So we have the strong belief that, see, even though if some obstacles come, I know that I can break those obstacles. So we all have the capability to break those uh, what uh, obstacles. So without this conviction, obstacles can quickly become permanent barriers to success. So if we are not uh, for uh, if you are not uh, in strong opinion about we do, uh, for example, if some barrier is coming and I am thinking that no, I cannot do that. No, I cannot cross this like that. So what will come? What will happen? The obstacle will become the permanent barrier to success. Then we cannot get or we cannot uh, uh, even touch or taste the essence of success. So everyone should have the quality of conviction. And the next one will be clarity. So whenever we are starting a business, we have to get the clarity to uh, make the best strategies for success and we have to identify uh, who who are our target audience in the market so for example if i am running a clothes business i have to identify that to whom should i to whom should i sell these products or to uh, uh, for example uh, if i am selling to students how how far they will get benefited from it. I have to think that, think like that. So I have to clear, I have to get clear in what I am thinking 
in order to make my firm success. So uh, uh, a person with clear mind who has a fair idea of what needs to be done and how to deal with situations and circumstances has better leverage over driving outcomes. And the next one will be a contribution. So when, when we come to contribution, there are two elements, give to and giving off. The first one is giving to. So giving to means a cause, your organization, your employer, your team workers, or someone who needs or wants your help, advice, counsel, or knowledge. You have to uh, contribute your time to your organization, your employees, your team workers who are, a, who are in need of help or advice like that. And the second one will be giving off your best qualities, knowledge, skills, or uh, your abilities in order to stand on a common ground for the benefit of all concerned uh, organizations by adding value. So contribution has to be in two ways, right? So when we are contributing in these two ways for our workers and for our firm, automatically without our help, our business will be in progress. And the next one will be connections. So when we think of connections, uh, say for example, now I am connecting with you people. So, so how it helps to me? I have to think, right? So whenever we are connecting to new persons, it will lead to new business. For example, while uh, after this session, someone is uh, uh, giving some feedback, while someone is giving feedback, I might have, I may have think of some new business. Like, okay, yeah, this may be a good idea to start. So like that I will have, it will help me to lead a new business. Uh, and uh, for example, if uh, you are a CEO uh, of some firm, uh, and uh, meeting some uh, new persons from different firms or from similar firms, what will happen while you are getting more connections, you will automatically uh, have the deeper knowledge of uh, deeper knowledge of that uh, organization. So your doors will be op always open. Uh, for example, if I am talking with, uh, say, for example, your ma'am, Mrs. Sarathi, has invited me for this uh, session. So I thought that uh, only because of connections that made, right? Because we were we were both uh, good friends. And one at one time, she called me and uh, she, she asked that, uh, will you do this for me? I... Uh, without any... Without giving a second thought, I agreed to it because... Uh, uh see this will be the connection see whenever we are uh, having some connections with someone it will benefit both uh, both the parties so we will we can uh, have a good uh, communications and we can uh, develop our own skills through it so connections will make connections will be uh, one of the part of uh, this business strategies and the next one will be commitment so commitment, uh, so whenever we are, always our lecturers say that you have to be commitment, committed towards your work. So what do you mean by committed? So committed means, uh, it, it, will it be only physically or mentally? No. It have, being committed to goals and objectives have to be mentally, physically, or a combination of these two, so then only it will make uh, us understand the difference between successful business and unsuccessful ones. It will separate successful business from unsuccessful ones. So when we are commitment, it will drive us to keep going even things get tough. We can uh, set and achieve goals. We will be relay reliable and we will go extra miles 
and we will always think in a positive when positive manner so commitment will lead us to be passionate about about our business so i think uh, these nine c's these nine c's will empower each woman to get into the entrepreneur setup so with this i say this live the life you think you have to not what you uh, sorry live the life what you want and not the life you think you have to say for example our parents say that uh, after your studies you have to get married after your studies you have to do this thing after your studies you have to do that thing but what i am saying is what your mind is saying is it saying that is it saying that you have to do you have to get married or you have to bear children or you have to start a business so now what your mind is telling think of that and listen to your mind and go ahead with that have a belief in that it will it will make you to reach the place you desire and to, so the topic now i <laughs> back to topic to unleash your in entrepreneurial potential what you have to do the first thing is you need skills you didn't learn in college see even uh, i am uh, when i did my ma i didn't had any knowledge about this business so what i thought was i have to i have to uh, know something about business so most people go to school and get the education they they think they need to get a job they think they want this is a mental block so we are all thinking that we we have to get a job that is not that is a big mental block the assumption that you have to do what everyone else is doing so for example our seniors might have gone to work so what we are thinking is say after our education we have to If we are also have to we have al also reach the same place so al although a traditional education is important it doesn't prepare you for the consequences and opportunities of the new digital economy we are now in graduates of the education system are vulnerable and lack the life skills required for life resilience and entrepreneurship so we are graduated but do we know any life skills that how to lead a firm no right but uh, but today you need skills you won't learn in college in order to get into this business sector you also need to shake off false hope of job security thinking that you don't need to learn new digital skills and the belief that your only opinion is to trade time for money in a job you dislike to get by for example if you are uh, going for a job which you don't like what happens you will earn money and all but what about your self satisfaction it won't be get right so whenever we are thinking of uh, something we have to think from our heart so you have to think that what your heart is saying whether you want to be an entrepreneur or you you are going to work for someone so it's time to shake up the tremendous entrepreneurial potential that lies within you okay so then always have faith that the right opportunity will come your way i while i was starting a business i had the faith that the opportunity had come and i have to start it so likewise everyone will have the faith that something will come your come in your way to take you to the success but many of us get scared right we lose our courage to become more and unleash our entrepreneurial potential we fear uh, taking on the unknown of new opportunities and may even take a step out in a, in a new direction but we quickly get frustrated and worried we lose confidence and we revert back to our old self to keep what we have 
This is a scarcity mindset due to strong mental chokeholds. We become so desperate that we put our energy into trying to rekindle what was lost or uh, we simply focus on energy on complaining about why it happened to us and how it wasn't fair. Epime solu alaya. Yeda do naranishna nammal ko mati yeh idhiya naranishtukde. Yeh yena ko mati narakde. So instead of that, think that idhi naranda kandi pa adhi yedo. Idha vada better ana or options or opportunities or new doors are going to open up. Dingrada you have to think. So uh, the next one will be. call to action so learn how to how to unleash your entrepreneurial potential you have to learn that we have all felt stuck at one point or another but what if making a greater impact on society greater profits and living your full potential is exactly what you deserve breaking through choke holes of the world and exploring new entrepreneurial opportunities may be just what you are designed to do so through a new door of entrepreneurship you will have the opportunity to create joy wealth and abundance for you your community and those around you so don't be someone who only talks about change when you truly break through it's the moment you make the decision your work and personal life will never be the same again but you have to recognize the choke hold before you can break through it and you need the right training and skills to unleash your entrepreneurial potential so for that uh, read some books on entrepreneur on entrepreneurship and uh, how to do business management and all so for each and uh, uh, everyone all this uh, uh, will help you to unleash your entrepreneurial potential so now now i have been uh, spoken for some 45 minutes do you know who i am i do you know me no right so uh, even i was a student back then uh, uh, 2013 or uh, 2018 i did my uh, ma at 2018 and after that i did my m phil and suddenly i had a thought that what am i doing so where am i now i'm yeah Uh, all these years i am studying 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 yes but where it is going to take me even now i am doing my phd but where it is going to take me who am i so on one fine day uh, uh, i was working at avinash lingam college so while i was uh, working there uh, this covid 19 pandemic has come that had come so uh, after that Uh, i lost my job initially i was so frustrated on that because without any intimation or without any uh, what without any thought uh, i lost a job so it was so difficult for me to sit at home because all these days i was running 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 now i am like uh, without anything i was sitting at my own house and what am i go- doing going to do and when i am looking at other persons they are all doing something at home like uh, work from home they are doing some I- uh, they are from some it sectors or some business persons they are working from home so now i have the thought that uh, see i am just wasting my time yes i know that uh, uh i'm still young but still i am wasting some time so what i thought was i have to do something in order to uh make my time efficient so at that time uh i had some uh, uh i had some savings through my part time job while i was working uh, sorry while i was studying uh ma i work uh, in a firm as a tutor for 3 uh, hours per day so i earned some uh, it it was for some 2 years so i had some 1 lakh uh, with me so i thought that uh, uh, with this 1 lakh and uh, the amount which i uh, earned through my job as a assistant professor i thought that uh, i have to invest this on something i don't know 
to which field I'm going to choose or uh, so where I have where I am going to invest, where I is going to invest. I just had a thought that I had to do something in order to make my time effectively. So at that time, um, with my own determination, I explored a lot. I, I started to surf on internet about some potential avenues of income. So it was during this, that quest, I stumbled upon the thriving world of this online retail clothing businesses. You don't believe that even my own family members used to uh, buy, uh, sorry, get uh, uh, buy dresses from this uh, online retail shops. Even I was one person who used to get uh, buy dresses from these online retail shops. They will have some WhatsApp group, and if we order, they will uh, send the uh, what dispatch that uh, cloth to our house. So I was wondered that how they are doing this, because. Now, at, uh, during COVID time, all the shops were closed, but still they were running business. So I, I was wondered about that. So what I thought was, instead of shit, uh, shitting at the uh, home, even I can also start this business. So that's how I, uh, that was the first uh, step I started to begin. So uh, that my shuttered doors, uh, were opened on that time and I started to explore this uh, e-commerce world of uh, e-commerce shopping world. So I was uh, so much of, uh, I was full of curiosity and I started to learn everything. And I start, and I took the bold decision to venture into the uh, world of uh, what, shopping. But I don't have uh, much investment with me. Uh, I only had one mobile phone and uh, the commitment to succeed. So what I thought was, uh, I started to start opening a WhatsApp uh, group and uh, I shared, uh, shared the links to my friends and family members and the neighbors who were uh, with me. So uh, I started uh, doing all this progress and one by one, uh, had started to join and after that uh, i contacted so many uh, business uh, this uh, uh, manufacturers of dresses but uh, even at that time many suppliers were hesitant to provide single pieces but i go and persisted uh, uh, i used to call them and I share my vision that I'm willing to uh, do like this, that, and all. I asked for their support on my endeavor. So, but uh, so many manufacturers uh, were hesitant towards it, but a few supported me. And with them, with their support, I started this business. It was uh, at first it uh, during uh, those times it was just a painstaking for me to ensure the highest quality products because everyone now everyone are selling the uh, selling uh, putties and all, but I have the mindset that I have to sell only the highest quality products that is not available with other shops. So I started to search for the high quality products. So through that, I, I got so many contacts of manufacturers. So which was so productive of time. And as word spread and my customer base started to grow, then I found myself propelled by a new found sense of purpose. Uh, it, it is just, I started it just as a to pass the time and to make it effective. But later it has started to bloom into a full-fledged business, driven not by the pursuit of wealth, but by a genuine passion for delivering value and delighting customers with each and every purpose. So I, I thought that I have to give high quality products at a lesser amount. 
So now, now today I reflect on my journey from unemployment to entrepreneurship. Uh, I am filled with gratitude for the challenges that pushed me out of my comfort zone and propelled me towards a brighter future. While the road ahead may be fraught with obstacles, I am undeterred. But with the knowledge, with passion, persistence, and uh, steadfast commitment to quality, I make it possible to start my own franchise of Pretz Collections. Now I have given my, uh, I, I have a shop and one of my customer has taken a franchise of Pretz Collections. Now I'm so happy that, see with the zero investment, without any support or help. My hometown was, uh, my hometown is Sivahasi. But I uh, um, I started my education at uh, Kwayamuthur. Without any support of my family members or my relatives or my friends, I initiated the business on single hand. No one had come forward to support me, even my own family members. I know that this may be a difficult path for me to travel, but I thought that I have to do. I have to, uh, maybe uh, it is also some part of a service mind also, because uh, uh, whenever I met, I meet some students, they used to tell that, ma'am, we gone to Ukadam or Gandhibaram to purchase so-and-so dress, but even that was too costly and all. The quality also was poor. So I thought that uh, I can give high quality products at a reasonable rate. So that is the only successful part in all my endeavors. So I think that with that mindset, now I had a uh, huge, what, um, I had so many clients who ask for some, uh, Set, set kurtis like for some 30 to 40 people. And uh, so many wholesalers are there. Oh, see, uh, I started this business thinking that uh, it is only for some time being and all because I'm wasting some time and all. But after that, it becomes my habit. And uh, uh, see, now I'm thinking that this is my field and this is my career. Uh, the persistence made me to reach the heights. So here is to seizing opportunities and embracing change and daring to dream. I dare to dream. I I request everyone to dream even in the face of adversity, because if we dream in the adversity, it will make us to to reach heights. Because uh, in the darker times only the brightest stars will be born. It will eliminate the path to future filled with infinite possibilities. Even I found uh, myself straddling two seemingly distinct realms, the world of academia and uh, the world of entrepreneurship. Even now I am doing my PhD. But uh, that is a different path. So even if, if I get a job, even if I become a lecturer, I can also take my career as an entrepreneur, right? Because uh, uh, I think uh, both delves deeper into both spheres. It will have the remarkable parallels they share. <laughs> so I request uh, the fellow students of English literature, because we are all English literature students. So we, we have so much of confidence in, uh, within us. So if you meet some Tamil, Tamil students, they won't be that much of uh, enthusiastic as us. Uh, I think uh, English students are different uh, in all the colleges. We will have some, uh, uh, what uh, we will, Tamil uh, English students now on the The reason is we know how to handle things, we know how to go beyond the confines, right? So I request all your all the students to think beyond the classroom and uh, 
go beyond the confines of the classroom and embrace the entrepreneurial spirit within, within you. I know that your love for language and your keen insights into human nature will make you unleash upon the world of business. And to those, and to those who dream of uh, starting their own business, I offer you the, this advice, dare to dream, dare to create opportunities because opportunities will not come for you. You have to make the opportunities and dare to defy the limitations imposed upon you. In the words of Shakespeare, all the world is a stage and all the men and women merely are players. So go forth and write the next chapter of your story with courage, passion, and unwavering determination. So in closing, I want to leave you with a quote by the great Virginia Woolf. Arrange whatever pieces come your way. For in the ever evolving tapestry of life, it is not about the perfection of the pieces, but rather the beauty of the mosaic they create. Thank you once again for giving me such an opportunity. And uh, I thank each and every staff members and students who are going to become young entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your eye-opener session. Students, it's time for the feedback. So willing students, share your thoughts now, or else if you have any questions, you can ask now. Yeah, I, I invite questions. Please, if there are any questions, or if you have any doubts regarding this business, you can uh, you can talk. The uh, forum is open for you, please. Good morning, ma'am. I'm Shashmita Mary from First yeah, B. Yeah, good morning. English. Yes, Shashmita. I would like to ask a doubt. Um, uh -huh. You said that we could read some books that related to entrepreneurship that which we can improve our knowledge regarding entrepreneurship right now, ma'am. Could you recommend some books? Like, Do you know good? Uh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is the one book which I used to suggest to all uh, students. Because uh, if you go on reading that Rich Dad's uh, uh, Poor Dad, you'll get a uh, mindset that how to, how to initiate a business. Yes, ma'am. Mm. Any other books, ma'am? Could you recommend? Uh, there is one more book. Uh, uh, yesterday itself, uh, yesterday only I I thought to come. I'll I'll check and uh, I'll send to Sarathi, ma'am. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Kana, there is one more book called Zero to One. Uh, I think. Uh, that is from uh, Peter, some uh, tile Peter or something. Zero okay. to one. So that will be a good book for you to read. Okay. Okay. Da. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, Dow. Any other questions? Good morning, ma'am. Yeah, good morning, Da. Um, this is Diana, ma'am, pursuing third B English. Yes, Diana. Uh, ma'am, uh, you have told that uh, you came across many struggles, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, could you please tell me any one of the struggles that you never uh, forget, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, see, I, I, I had come, come across many struggles from my family and uh, the neighbors. But one which I never forget is, uh, so after I started this business, the shop near to mine, mine was uh, uh, this uh, bakery shop. So there won't be bakery items. Instead, they'll sell uh, cigarettes. <laughs> so I am allergic to cigarette smells and I have uh, 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 some uh, problems uh, regarding breathing and all. So uh, I used to call the vendor of the uh, shop and I informed him to uh, request the 
their customers to smoke somewhere else. But while I was uh, doing it repeatedly, he got uh, tensed and he started to scold. I, I was the only person at shop then. then. So I, I didn't know what I have to do, but I have to be bold in order to face him, right? So what I thought was, uh, instead of uh, crying and all, I have to think something differently. So I, I called uh, police officers uh, of nearby station. I, I went to them and I, I approached them directly and I called them that uh, to, uh, to uh, take care of the issue. And from that time, almost some seven to eight times the police officers had visited the shop. I used to call them and I said, I, I complained them. So it was a difficult path for me because all the customers of the bakery shop <clears throat> used to uh, uh, call me in a bad words and all. Uh, I never mind those things, but instead I was so bold and I overcome all those things. It was uh, one forgetful moment. And uh, now if I'm thinking that I'll have uh, a big smile in me. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Thank you, mom, for sharing yours. Yeah. Any other questions? Good morning, ma'am. Yeah, good morning, good morning. I'm Srinega from First B English. First yes, of all, Srinega. I would like to thank you, ma'am, for sparing your time okay. with us. This it's session is privilege. very useful, ma'am. Yeah, thank, thank you, ma'am, for you. making this session very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Yeah, good morning. I'm Tamari Chalvi from First B English. Yes, yes. The section was truly great, ma'am. The knowledge, yeah. knowledge you shared was very easy to understand. Thank you, and thank you. Thank you for spending our time, valuable time for us. Thank you, thank you. Good morning, ma'am. Hey, good morning. I'm Hepshiba, pursuing second B English, ma'am. Yes, yes, First yes, of all, yes. I want to confess my heartful thanks to you for spending your valuable time, ma'am. The section Thank was you. really good and an eye-opener one. The way you, you are explaining the topic is really good and uh, steadily motivate us, ma'am. I hope it will definitely be useful for our future, ma'am. Thank you for your tips and topics, ideas that we explain with us, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, girls, for sharing your valuable feedback. Uh, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. I would like to welcome Dino Shri for delivering the word of thanks. Thankfulness is the beginning of gratitude. Gratitude is the com completion of thankfulness. Good morning, everyone. I am Dino Shri, pursuing third BA English. Today, I feel honored and privileged to have been allowed to extend my word of thanks on this auspicious occasion. With the blessings of our founder, late line Dr. K. S. Ramasamy MGF, I am greatly privileged to thank our chairman, Mr. R. Srinivasan, in absentia. I extend my gratitude to our dignified CEO, ma'am, Dr. Akila Muthramalingam, in absentia. I am very much elated to thank our dynamic principal, Dr. M. Karthikeyan, in absentia. I would like to convey my sincere thanks to our guest speaker. Ms. Preeti, proprietor of Fred's Collections, Coimbatore, to, for sparing her valuable time with us. Thank you, ma'am. I, I would like you. to thank our supportive head, Ms. R. Satyapriya, in absentia, for being supportive in all the aspects. My immense gratitude for the teachers who inspire us every day and the young minds for our co cooperation. Thank you, each and everyone, for your being here. Thank you. Thank you, Dina Shri, and thank you, ma'am, for sparing your valuable time with us. Thank you all for your patience. Have a nice day.